Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Marcos Chedro. I am a software engineer at HP uh, and also an Inspire contributor since uh, a couple of years. And today I'd like to share with you some work that we have been doing with um, some folks at HP, uh, Adrian Cardoso and Dorian Lambeck, around using um, dev IDs and TPMs for Spire node attestation. We uh, base our work in two important uh, industry standards. The first one is the IEEE standard for local and metropolitan area networks, secure device identity. This document, um, which was published a couple of years ago, uh, defined the concept of dev ID. Uh, probably some of you are already familiar with this concept, but in case, in case you are not, uh, a dev ID is essentially uh, a cryptographic identity in the form of an X509 certificate with certain um, properties and protocols that make it suitable for device uh, identification. The standard defines uh, two kinds of dev IDs. Uh, a dev ID can be an I dev ID, which is the, the initial device identity uh, that is created by, by the manufacturer at manufacturing time. And then uh, we have the LDEV ID, which is the local identifier uh, that is um, created by the administrator. And the other important document is the TCG uh, TPM 2.0 keys for device identity and attestation. This document was released only a couple of months ago uh, by the TCG, the Trusted Computing Group. This group is the same that uh, defined the TPM specification. Um, and in this opportunity, they are releasing this, this document uh, when they are bringing us some recommendations for uh, using dev IDs with TPMs. So uh, essentially, these recommendations are around how the TPM uh, must be provisioned, uh, which kind of uh, keys should be used um, in which in which hierarchies in the TPM these LDEV IDs and IDEV IDs must be placed um, and other security and privacy considerations. So uh, based on all this information and some previous work done by the community, we came up with this um, proposal. This is a, a diagram of the uh, proposal Nova Testor. The, it is very similar to the X509 um, proof of possession uh, attestor, but the main difference is that the uh, signing operation, operation, instead of being done in the agent itself, it is done uh, in the TPM, which is uh, isolated. So the, the attestation workflow is uh, the following. The, in the first step, the the agent loads the DVD credentials, the certificate plus the encrypted private key. The encrypted key is loaded into the TPM. So now this, this TPM is ready to perform signing operations. And the DVD uh, certificate is sent to the server side of the attestor. The attestor validates this uh, certificate using a configured CI bundle. If the, if the validation succeeds, the server issues the challenge to the agent. Uh, this is an, an N once that needs to be signed. So the agent asks the TPM to sign this payload. The TPM uh, signs it and sends it back to the agent, and the agent sends uh, the, the, the payload signed to the server, which finally uh, verifies the, the signature using the, the dev ID. And if it is successful, the, the attestation is, is confirmed. So this is, in a few words, how, how this, this, this attestor works. Um, there's a lot more going on. Uh, if you are interested in, in, in this work, here you can see that the public GitHub issue, where all this is being actively discussed. Uh, so we are happy to, to hear any comments or, or feedback about it. And now I will hand it to uh, Adiani, who's going to run a live demo. Okay.
No, I think it's no. Sorry, let me share here. Can you see? Okay. Hello, everyone. Yep. So, uh, okay. So, as Marcus presented, our plugin is similar to the X509 POP node test, but leverages the dev ID uh, based on the TCG draft just published, where the private key is protected by the TPM. So, here I'm connected to a physical server with a TPM 2.0, and we already have a dev ID provision. Yeah, we'll see the, uh, the example later. So let's take a look on the plugin configuration here. So here in the server side, we have our node test plugin. We are calling TPM2, and we just need to configure the CA bundle path. This is the, the, the CA that signed the dev ID certificate. Now let's check the agent side. So here is our plugin. And we must configure the, where the dev ID certificate, private, and public keys are. So as Marcos mentioned, the private blob is encrypted. So and the key can only be used once it's loaded in the same TPM in which it was created. So after node attestation, when the agent proves the possession of the private key that is rooted in the CA bundle, we extract information from the dev ID certificate to create the node selectors. So let's now see an example of a dev ID certificate. So this certificate um, we are creating using an internal provisioning tool that we have been working on that is following the, the, the spec, the TCG spec. And here we can see that we have in the subject information about the device, like the platform serial number. We also have information in the, in the extensions. So TCG recommends the use of digital signature only for the key usage. TCG also defines some OIDs that uh, must be present, like this one, that means that the issuer has valid validated the dev ID residency. So in the during the provision, it means the issuer has checked that all the keys reside on the same TPM of a well-known vendor. By the way, the TCG draft is under review, so this OID has moved to the certificate policy field. So we need to update our provisioning too later. Uh, TCG also specifies that the subject alternative name uh, may contain information about the t to identify the TPM. So as the TCG OIDs, these data structures in use here are not recognized by the, the OpenCCL tool yet, but it's not an error, it's just the, the visualization. Okay, so this is the example of the dev ID that we are using. Now let's see it's working. So here on the top, I will start the spider server. And let's just check there is no attested agent. Okay. And now let's run here on the top on the bottom the spider uh, agent to check the node attestation. So here you can see the node attestation was successful. Let's see now the selectors that we have been we are creating. So here you can see that now we have one attested agent that used our plugin. And as uh, similar to the X509 uh, pop node test, we are using the fingerprint for the speech ID and also as one selector. We extract the information from the certificate. So you can see here the certificate serial number, each field uh, value in the subject field and also in the issue field. So for, for each OID, you have one selector. And if there is a well-known name, we also have this as a selector. So to help when creating the registration entries, we can think about extracting more information from the certificate, like uh, those information in the subject alternative name, right? For example, the IP address, right? And one discussion that is being ongoing in the community is to also add the PCR values as selectors. So this will require more change, but this is under discussion. So this completes our demo. This work is in progress, so we appreciate your feedback on this proposal. Uh, we are in the process to open source the plugin and the provisioning tool to help on the discussions. So thank you. Let's see if we have questions. Thank you. I think we did see a couple of uh, questions. Um, so Adrian, if you can answer, can you link the OID in the client certificate? This one? Let's go back. Show that idea. 
So here we have for each, in the subject for each uh, value, we have one selector. So the, the code is generic, right? So we just parse the values and create one select for each value here. Um, I, I think um, Zach has a bunch of questions. I don't know, Zach, if you want to unmute yourself. I don't see anything, anyone else asking questions. Oh, there was an extension that OpenSSL doesn't understand. Yes, here. To learn more about the, the what object identifier that is. Oh, this that's is defined. Uh, th that's this is defined by the TCG OID, but OpenSSL does not recognize that. So for this one, and and it was moved for to another field, the certificate policy. So I, I don't know if that's only adding in the dictionary in the OpenSSL to be able to read and and present the well-known name, right? But so far, the OpenSSL does not recognize that. So, so that's why. why the, like well, I, I was. I guess I misunderstood. I was looking at the binary subject alt name too. Oh, here, here is, is the data structures. So what, what determines that data structure? Uh, the TCG draft spec defines what structures that must be used to represent the TPM information, to identify the TPM. So this is, uh, I didn't enter into the details because there are so many different, uh, and let's say for the IDEV ID, there is a must field for the local dev ID, there is a, uh, should uh, field, let's say, information. And since we don't have any platform with IDEV IDs available yet, this tool that we are working on following the spec is creating IDEV ID and we are using as a local dev ID in our plugin just for testing, right? So, but these are these, the data structures in the DCG spec that defines which structures must be used here. Okay. So it's hardware so model. It's that, that is the name. It's hardware right. model and the hardware so these type. Are, these are fields. It's just OpenSSL isn't translating. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's not an error. It's just because we it can parse uh, and present the well-known name, let's say, just a numerical value. Oh, the way. It looks like somebody linked to the, the, the TCG uh, document. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then the the side my side my follow up or sort of unrelated question is uh, like from my understanding most manufacturers just kind of give you the CA and you don't necessarily have like uh, the manufacturer certificate so how do you like tie this trust to like the manufacturer like how do you build your your database of serial numbers to bootstrap this trust. The idea is that we we, sh we must use the IDEV IDs from the manufacturer. So we don't have that yet, but soon manufacturers will be start uh, shipping with this IDEV ID. And then we, we must have the CA to verify that. And then we should uh, have the local provision to create the IDEV IDs based on the uh, initial attestation keys that will be provided by the manufacturer. So this the value of this is it's the the root of trust it comes from the, the, the manufacturers. Yeah. So just for testing that we are using, uh, like this way, creating uh, not in the manufacturer, right? Because we don't have that yet available. Got it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I, I hey, think there are a bunch. I just, I just want to say uh, kudos. You're relatively new to the projects, but you've, you've entered with a bang and you've ramped up in a relatively short time and are, are driving something that is uh, quite a meaningful contribution alongside others and the team. So kudos to you and, and welcome to the community. Thank you. Great demo, thanks.